morning. I want to give you a really warm welcome to our Elmwood Sunday morning service. My name's Chris and I'm the senior leader at the church. Well, today is a special day. Today is Valentine's Day. And I don't know whether you received a Valentine's card this morning, but whether you did or you didn't, the truth is that you are incredibly loved by God. That you are God's Valentine today. He loves you so much. And we're going to be thinking about just how much God loves us in our service today. Well, we have a brilliant service planned. Sam is going to be leading our worship. And Annabel Dennell is going to be presenting a children's talk for us. We thank uh, Andy Dennell behind the scenes doing the filming and Vicky, his wife, who did the uh, script writing and graphics. So it's a real family production. Thank you to them for doing another wonderful uh, children's talk this morning. Christine is going to be sharing our reading and we're going to be looking at the book of Hosea this morning as we think about just how much God loves us. But before we go any further, let me pray. Lord God, we thank you that as we come into your presence this morning, we know that we are incredibly loved. We thank you that your love for us meant that Jesus went to the cross. There couldn't be a, a greater um, illustration of how much we are loved by you. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Thank you that we come <clears throat> into your presence this morning with confidence because we know that you love us so much and care for us so much. Lord, be in every part of our service today. May it bring honour and glory to your name. Amen. You were the word at the beginning All we've got the Lord most high Hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you I'm a Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is And nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus In heaven without us So Jesus you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King Is what a wonderful name it is And nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus And oh, the wonderful name of Jesus There is power in your name Oh, there's power in your mighty name I sing, death could not hold you Death could not hold you The fell to before you You silenced the boast of sin and grave Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now 
Oh, you alone. 
on every breath that I take every moment I'm awake Lord have your way in me Lord have your way in me Come have your way Have your way in me, yeah. Sing, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you, I love you It's more than anything Let's sing that again Jesus, I love you Jesus, I love you I love you, I love you Jesus, I love you I love you, I love you Jesus, I love you I love you, I love you more than anything. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit is like water to my soul. Your word is a love. To my feet, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit is like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto. My feet, Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus, I love you. I love you, I love you, Jesus, I love you. I love you, I love you, Jesus, I love. Adam and Eve, and they lived in the Garden of Eden. Eden was a beautiful and pure place, and God was there with them. But Adam and Eve chose to sin by ignoring the one rule that God gave them, not to eat from the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. There was no place for sin in the Garden of Eden, so God had to send them out of the garden, and they were separated from him. But God did not want man to be separated from him forever. He did not want sin to get in the way of our relationship with him. 
God chose to send his son Jesus to save us so that we might be forgiven for our sin and have eternal life with him. The consequence of sin is death, so Jesus had to die in our place by taking all our sin upon himself. It says in 1 Peter 2 verse 24, he personally carried our sins in his body onto the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. This experiment can help us to remember what God has done for us. Here is a penny that represents us, and this plate is our life. In this cup we have clean water because we all start out in life clean and pure. But over time we will start to sin. That sin will cover us. It will surround us and drown us. It can feel like there is no way to become clean again. So God sent Jesus to be the light of our world. To shine in the dark places and show us there is a better way. Jesus was taken to die on the cross and buried in a tomb. And in his death, he gave us the most wonderful gift. He took all our sins so that we could be forgiven and through his forgiveness, we can be clean again. At the beginning, we learnt the consequence of sin is death. Well, Jesus was the final sacrifice for sin. Through Jesus' death, we are freed from our sins. That means we can come close to God again. We are no longer separated from him. Lord God, in recent weeks we've been thinking about the topic of prayer. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the best teacher possible when it comes to prayer. And we look to your example. We thank you that we've been reminded to speak naturally to, to you and without show. The Lord's Prayer has reminded us that we can bring a whole array of requests to you. We thank you for the reminder that you, Lord God, are a father to us. That you tenderly love us. That we can come with confidence before you with our prayer requests and we thank you that you want us to be specific in the things that we ask for and so Lord we bring our requests before you today we pray for wisdom for our politicians and scientists as they consider the route map out of lockdown we pray that they will know the best way to uh, keep people safe at this time. We pray for the vaccines that are being rolled out at the moment. We pray that they will prove effective against the new variants, that they will um, prevent severe illness. And Lord, we want to remember those who are facing burnout and breakdown at this time so many are under immense pressure maybe doing homeschooling maybe working in hospitals maybe working under the pressure of the threat of catching covid we pray lord that you would protect them from overload we pray for those who feel mentally unstable at the moment that you will pre preserve them that you will protect them from breakdown lord be with all of those that are struggling intensely at this time lord god we pray for the country of myanmar we pray that democracy might return to that country we pray against any further violence we bring before you this morning mavic and rowena we thank you for the incredible mission work that they've done in the Philippines. 
and as they prepare to move on to their next mission field we pray that they will be given permission to travel help them lord to know exactly where you would have them go next in these unusual times lord we pray for our own church leadership give us wisdom as we prepare for the end of lockdown in your precious name we pray amen the reading is taken from hosea chapter 1 verses 1 to 11 and then from chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 the word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Beeri, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, marry a promiscuous woman, and have children with her, for, like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Goma, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Goma conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her lo Rahama, which means not loved, for I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she had weaned lo Ruhama, Goma had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him lo Ami, which means not my people, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they shall be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. The Lord said to me, Go, show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for fifteen shekels of silver, and about a homer and a lethek of barley. Then I told her, You are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will behave the same way toward you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household goods. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. This morning we're having a break from looking at the topic of prayer and because it's Valentine's Day we're thinking about God's incredible love for us and we're reflecting on God's love by looking at the story of the prophet Hosea. Hosea was a prophet to the northern kingdom who came soon after the prophet Amos. So often people question God's justice and love. God uses Hosea's personal life to show his side of the picture. God wants us to know how he feels in relationship to us. 
and he makes an incredible request of Hosea. We see it in Hosea chapter 1 and verse 2. He says, go take to yourself an adulterous wife. What he's really saying there is, go and take someone to be your wife who has a questionable, is of questionable character, who has a bad reputation. A prostitute is what he's saying. Derek Kidner, speaking of this passage, writes, what Hosea had to do was in miniature what God had done in giving his love to a partner with a history and with a roving eye. Let me read that quote to you again. What Hosea had to do was in miniature what God had done in giving his love to a partner with a history and with a roving eye. You see, God made a covenant with Israel at Mount Sinai. Yet he already knew what Israel were like. He knew what they were going to do. He knew that they would be a people who would chase after foreign gods, that they would be unfaithful in their relationship to him. And that saddened God greatly. The truth is that we, like Israel, are unworthy of the love that God has shown to us. We will never, ever be worthy of the kind of love that God has shown to us. It's an incredible love, a love that we will never ever deserve. And yet he lavishes his love upon us. Christ reached out to the publican, to the prostitutes, to the outcasts. God in Christ reached out to all of us, even though all of us have fallen short of his perfect standard. The incredible thing is when we think about the love of God for us, that no one is beyond that love. That there is no one that God can't love. So incredible is his love for us. In John 3 and verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and it's the whosoever that I want to uh, focus in on there that I want to emphasize that whosoever puts their trust in Christ will find eternal life will receive the love of God and I want us to think about the names of Hosea's children and they're described in this passage as children of unfaithfulness. The first child was called Jezreel and Jezreel was the name of a place uh, that is associated with a bloodthirsty event and it, it speaks of if somebody's called Jezreel it's some somebody who deserves punishment. And then the second child is called Lo Ruhama. Lo Ruhama. And that actually means not loved. Fancy giving a child a name, not loved. And then the third child is called Loani. And that means not my people. So you've got one child that's named after a place that's associated with a bloodthirsty event, an event that deserved punishment. You've got one child whose name means not loved. And you, the third child, the third child's name means not my people. And there's a suggestion from the names of the second and the third child that those, cha those children reminded Hosea of his wife's unfaithfulness. And so the Israelites reminded God of their unfaithfulness every time he looked upon them, just as Hosea's children reminded him of his wife's unfaithfulness every time he looked upon them. Genesis 1 and verse 27 said that we are, says that we are made in the image of God. We're made to reflect God. And yet the second and the third child of Hosea's did not share 
a likeness to Hosea. They were children of unfaithfulness. They didn't resemble their father. And, and that speaks of the pain of a father whose children remind him of his wife's unfaithfulness. And the challenge for us today is when God looks upon us, what does he see? Does he find us faithful to him? Or do we remind him of our unfaithfulness? That we haven't kept our promises, that we've turned away from him, that we've chased after others. We're told in Hosea chapter two, verse seven, that Hosea's wife ran after many lovers. You know, when Israel stood at the foot of Mount Sinai, Israel was like a bride, a bride who was making promises to her groom. And the groom was God. And Israel as a bride promised to love, to honor and to obey. And yet, when Israel entered Canaan, we find Israel sought Canaanite gods, went running after the gods of the Canaanites. They thought that Yahweh was not a suitable god for arable land. So since the Canaanites had lived in arable land and had seen some success, maybe they should start worshipping their gods as well, just so that things would go well with them. So they sought Baal, they got involved in cult prostitution, they did the same things that the Canaanites did. So they deserted the covenant and the promises that they'd made to God at Mount Sinai. They broke that relationship. I wonder, have we remained loyal and faithful to God? Or do we run after other things? Things that take the place of God. Are we a little bit like the Israelites who made promises but proved unfaithful? If the things that we've run after instead of God are material things, then maybe God has to show us that he is the source of all the good things we enjoy. Look what it says in Hosea chapter 2 verses five to eight let me read those verses to you their mother has been unfaithful and has conceived them in disgrace she said i will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water my wool and my linen my oil and my drink therefore i will block her path with thorn bushes i will wall her in so that she cannot find her way she will chase after her lovers but not catch them she will look for them but not find them then she will say, I will go back to my husband as at first, for then I was better off than now. She has not acknowledged that I was the one who gave her the grain, the new wine and oil, who lavished on her the silver and gold, which they used for Baal. So Hosea's wife went running after other lovers thinking that they were the source of all the good things that she needed in her life. But actually, Hosea was the source of the good things that she enjoyed in her life. And we as individuals can chase after all sorts of things, thinking they are the things that will provide us with what we need, when in actual fact, we need to understand that God is the one that provides us with all our needs, that he is the source of all good things in our lives he is the one that we should chase after we need to be those who give God the honor and the primacy that he deserves in our lives now we get to a really exciting part of this story because in Hosea, Hosea chapter 3 we find that God tells Hosea to go and find his wife to show his love for her again. 
And in Hosea chapter 3 and verse 2, we find that he actually had to buy her back from the lover she'd run off with at a price. So in Hosea chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a lethic of barley. Obviously, the wife of Hosea had fallen into slavery. She had become uh, involved in prostitution. She had, being unfaithful to Hosea, even some of his own children didn't remind him of himself. She then run off with other lovers and now she's descended into slavery to the point where Hosea, her legitimate husband, actually has to pay a price to buy her back, to show his love to her again. Well, when you think it, it shows how valuable this wife of Hosea's was to the lovers that she'd run after that actually his own her own husband had to buy her back at a price. Isn't that a picture of how Satan treats us, how he doesn't value us, how he uh, denigrates us? But God is the one who lifts us up. God is the one who showers his love upon us. And just as Hosea had to buy his wife back at a great cost, so God bought us back, each one of us back, at a great price. And what was the cost of God's love for us? Well, the cost of God's love for us was the death of Christ upon the cross, that Jesus died on the cross in our place, taking the punishment for the things that we've done wrong, so that through faith in him, we can be set free, we can be forgiven, we can start a new life with him. With him. Even though we've run away from God, God loves us and comes looking for us and pays an incredible price to buy us back. And that price was the death of Christ upon the cross for each one of us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20 it speaks of that great price. It says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honour God with your body. And in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 23, it says this, you were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. We have been bought at a price. A price that shows us how much we are loved by God. When we're thinking about love on a day like Valentine's Day, there is no greater love than God's love for us, demonstrated through the life of Christ, through his sacrifice made once and for all for each one of us. So through faith in him, we can be forgiven and begin anew and begin afresh. I wonder, this Valentine's Day, how do we respond to such a love, such a self-giving love, a love that goes beyond the call of duty. That is the kind of love that God has shown to us in Christ. We are incredibly loved today. And when we think about the love that God has poured into our life, how can we not love him in return? How can we not strive to be more like Christ? Do we not want other people not to look into our lives and see that we're unfaithful to God, but to look into our lives and see the likeness of God there? Because we want to live in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the strength that he gives, so that we can be more like Christ each day. Allow me to close my message with a prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, please forgive us when we prove unfaithful to you, when we run after other lovers, when we forget that you are the source of all the good things 
in our lives. Thank you, God, that despite our unfaithfulness, you have shown your love to us, that you came looking to us, that you wanted to reveal your love again. Thank you that you sent Jesus, who paid the great price for our salvation. Lord, if we've never asked for forgiveness before and committed our life to you, then even today, Lord, we say, please forgive us. May we follow you our whole life through. May we be those that allow your Holy Spirit to transform us so that we become more like you each day that other people see your likeness in us. Help us, Lord, to love others in the same way that we have been loved by you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the valley where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, you're good, oh.
I do hope that you've enjoyed worshipping God with us this morning. I hope that you'll join us again uh, next week for our virtual service at Elmwood. Go out into a new week remembering that you are incredibly loved by God. Let's close by sharing the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.